definitely a beast master off lane. The S dealer track will be roaming. The brew master will be mid, and the spectre will be a safe lane. So Fnatic have to make the decision now. Do they try and battle up against a late game Spectre or do they try and take a lot of early game advantage up against this lineup? Knowing that the three cores will be melee means they could get a huge advantage out from that too. I'm actually waiting for something more like a lone druid as the last selection here. Could control, of course the Brewmaster can't control the bear during, during the team fight as long as he splits off. But if you're using abilities on that bear, Five that means seconds. the centaur, the wraith king, and the puck move freely. And the Beastmaster is not going to want to roar a bear. His primary target every Reserve single time is going to be time. the Centaur when he blinks in before he gets the hoof stomp off, or it's going to be the Puck. And then they've got to kill the Puck off very, very quickly. But the Puck's going to try and probably build into a very early Yule Scepter to buy himself that space when also the Haunt from, uh, from Power Rangers is used. Because that's going to cause him his next part of his problems. What happens with that early chip damage which the, which the Haunt will do to him? And if he has to phase shift, or if his blink dagger gets put on cooldown, then the Beastmaster or the Brewmaster could technically capitalize on that situation. The Fnatic, last choice now. Are we looking at a core Wraith King? Or do we go down the lines uh, with, with, a, uh, with a different support? Do we go down the lines between the Wraith King into a support role? Not probably the greatest thing to move him with a Skywrath Mage. But potential is there. And they will be. Allow me to support Wraith King. And go for a Halfling. So is technically capable of helping to deal with the split push power of the uh, You can do that through your replica. It's a lot of good uh, initiation. The E-Blade changes did happen as well. So you'll no longer go Scepter form yourself when you have your full E-Blade up and running. And there is, of course, that bit of a delay as well between the E-Blade attack and, and like when you can get your full combo off. So Shotgun Morphling is nowhere near as powerful as it used to be. Because it's not just a bump bump kind of thing. Uh, primarily because Tinker was just exploiting it so heavily. But now, you will be able to still do that proper combination, either the Shrek or the SD. I don't know if you can do it before they'll fully respond to it, especially that Shadow Demon, considering he will have disruption. So I'll have to buy some space to know what SD is doing, but he's the only man that could really stop that combination from happening. As, uh... It seems I've left Winter on. <laughs> I can't turn it off! Alright, so we'll be having ourselves a Winter Wonderland right now with uh, PR and Fnatic. As Arise, come with me. Let's run through our lineup. So we'll, we will have uh, Arise on the puck. We'll have uh, him going towards the solar mid with just some Shared Tangos and an Null Talisman. So stand up for him. Come with me will be the Wraith King support. We'll have uh, Rise as the supporting Skywrath Mage. And then Harney as, as over the Morphling. And uh, he'll be safe lane. Ace will be the off lane uh, Centaur. Putting that ward down rather deep. I wanted to make sure he can see down and also across and also back up again. So it's a very effective ward. The only thing he doesn't see is this room position on the side. But I'm fairly certain he'll be t spending a lot of time just walking over and back with that one. So as far as our, J our PR lineups, we have J4 as the Lashrak. We just stick with the Shadow Demon. They'll be supporting Earth Nexus. He'll be playing the core Spectre battle. on the safe lane. And uh, what is that piece? It's okay. Fantastic. So the armor looked nice. Uh, the Brewmaster, play the middle lane there by Shashlo. And that leaves Cheshire Cat as the off lane Beastmaster. And only one Clarity and four Tangos. Doesn't really have a... Well, he could... Like, this is going to be his stack point. And knowing that the Beastmaster is off lane, and it's really obvious from the lanes too that I had to know this. It, the only other way it would turn out is if they ran an aggro tri lane. And they, they do see the Lashrak up on top. And he should join Cheshire Cat for the early early start of this. Getting a kill in the off lane won't really happen. Not over on a centaur. Not one that picked up boots first and the only uh eh. You do have the Lestrax done. But that's the only controller. We're not gonna count the spectral dagger. It's a move speed change of eight percent. It's not enough to really have any kind of like big influence. Alright, so the Bounty Rune did end up going the way of the Shadow Demon as well. So both were taken by Power Rangers, so two for two at the moment. Cheshire Cat's going to have a bit of a rough time up here on the top lane. It's just going to be all harassment back. He did only buy boots first, so any uh, direct attacks as well will have their full effect over on him. And he's already down two-thirds of his light points and got three Tango Charges left. Kami's rotating over, so he's going to come in and try and He will, in fact, successfully block up the pull point. And then he could walk in behind this tower, because the creep wave's coming in. Not all the way, but potentially. Uh, with no boots first, getting that Hellfire Blast off would be a very, very risky kind of move. 
And they need the Beastmaster lower than what he is right now. Which isn't really possible until you're going to get some extra levels up. Which means Ryus needs to have Concussive Shot. Come with me. Being watched by Cheshire Casio come up. As Ace trying to leech the experience from the pull point. Everyone's just scampering around for either CS or experience points. For both the supports. And Fnatic, well, okay, they got a lot of experience points coming their way on the top lane. This is pushed out a very, very long way. No concussive shots, just all harassment damage. Rise, trying to go for the body block. That's why Cheshire Cat cut through the tree line. And they will force him out of the lane. At the same time, Cheshire Cat is going to walk down at the perfect time to pick up the rune. So no matter what it is, really, Rise has to stick with him here. And force him out. Be a bounty, be it, be it another real rune. Shashlo is coming over as well. The rune's going to spawn up. Arise doesn't have a bottle, so just give the bounty rune to him. Well, I'll be an invis room for the Shadow Demon, and that's an opening for Ace on the bottom lane. To kill him off, that is. Depending on how far he wants to move out. And this is the downside about putting that Observe Ward where he did. They don't see what's being picked up. When he does that, however, he is 100% aware of what's going on. Now, that ping just came out from the Shadow Demon. He may have pinged the fact that the Sentry Ward was dropped, and then the Range Creep will attack him. So, the, the, the chick is up. A barrel of laughs! Our rise. Actually got baited on that uh, phase shift. And Shashlo having himself a really good time there in mid lane. 13 0 up against a 12 for 3. Both capable of throwing a lot of nukes. And Shashlo, well, he's already running into bottle non stop, but has another 600 gold, so his boots will also arrive. And Arise, of course, having that early null task. So we gave him some good advantage early on. So now the Brewmaster already has his two points up in Drunken Brawler. So, holding onto that advantage is next to impossible for him. Spectre is the man with the better advantage. 18 for 3. Looks like we're going to see a phase boot build coming up from, from Nexus. More about the initiation style of things. That is not what J4 wanted to have happen. While the experience might get split up, Ace, nice little dodge. That double edge gave 3 last hits to Ace, and that basically completes up most of his tranquil boots. Which doesn't seem like much, but it's enough to keep him in this lane for a very long time. He's got himself a little bit of a friend, however. That friend can actually hold the creep way back if he wants to. Ah, uh, he's lost his friend. Gonna run underneath the tier 1 tower. Or is it? Yep, yep, now it's coming back up again. That doesn't actually delay the creep wave at all. He wanted to come in and hold the creep wave here. Even if it was only for like 5-10 seconds, that would have been enough. There's another rune contest. Quick bounty rune source, as well as a haste rune coming the way here at Power Rangers. There's your face boots over on the Spectre. It's just an over-aggressive hero, a way to zone out in the lane. It also really helps for these for these last hits of his. It's like Ace is actually holding onto his money for now. He could just buy his Trunkle Boost and have him send out the Courier. Or oh, Shashlo. Really low that rift. Ah, oh, nope. Oh, Arise missing his timing. He might be really annoyed if he's one attack away from killing off the uh, killing up the brewmaster. He face shifts to start with. Now the concussion shot flies in with the help by a blast. First ball be spilled. Four heroes came in for that one, including Ace. And that TP in towards middle lane ended, ended up being cancelled. So just a good gank. Everyone gets to be involved. So a good experience change. 110 for everybody. Just the extra cash coming in for the Wraith King as he's the one. He's the man that took the first blood. They look up to the top lane. Cheshire Cat's already got his two points up in the boar. Uh, his boar's actually timing out, but he's, he's already managed to get the stack, so that means the, the dewarding was done too. Movement's coming over from Centaur. And Ace, well, hop stop. Double edge, they need their silence as well from a right, so there's no clap. Well, actually, that silence is really low in duration. And Ace, too much damage from the tower. Tangos, or even the bottle charge that Arise trying to give him, then to keep him alive, wasn't enough. Which means they end up just feeding a kill over to the Brewmaster. Completing his arcane boots, or he can hold on to the extra money. To get just that little bit more close towards his blink dagger. As Cheshire Cat. He knows he'll win the initial. The initial movement speed battle. A tithe to the impurities. But uh, yeah. He doesn't have boots and Beastmaster does. But the the rune does go the way of Arise. 
So good bottle charges for him. Looks like just a simple bounty rune going to the way of the Lashrak. Up to level 4 now. And Ace is not going to take any chances. He, he threw away his life in the middle lane. Now he's trying to be a little bit more controlled about it all. And Arise managed to find one nice. with Dream Coil as well as a 3 2 attack. combo. Uh, you'll have to get both in the silence. Oh, he wastes, he wastes the smoke. They have no sentries. Uh, they, they do, they have one on the track. But no follow up. And in fact, Arise just finds the, uh, the semi double stack here. Greetings. Took one of the big guys, then just backs the crap out. And that gave time for Ryze to soak up some experience in the midline, which was much needed for him. Getting closer towards that level 6. He's also not too bad at zoning out heroes. So he held onto his mana for the moment. Doesn't really have a lot of it. 455, not much to speak of. Next is still free farming up. Because we're 7 minutes in, we switch ourselves to the net worth. 3.4k. Net worth going his way. Only sitting about 100 behind Harney. Looks like he's going to go into a Lincoln Sphere for a full carry build from him. And the smoke gang is coming over from Come With Me. The board's gonna see him, slows him down, and now he realizes. SC Disruption. Honey can't do really much to help him out here. Come With Me is dead. And the smoke gang was, it was bound to work at the end of the day. Unless everyone was back behind their towers, that was always going to work. So, eight minutes in. Advantage just stretching a little bit away for Power Rangers. I'm still liking their later game potential from this lineup. The Thanks. fact that you, you are running out with a Spectre. The Spectre's perfect up against heroes like Puck. To the, impurities. the only downside you're going to have is how much damage Spectre is capable of dishing out during the control period of Power Rangers. Between Raw, as well as uh, having Split Earth, Brewmaster, Ultimate, the SD Purge, all of these things working together, you need to make sure you get that big control off. Speaking of control, especially also needs to have the damage output, which is how much how much damage you can do during the control periods, relating to how many levels you get in the initiating items over on the power range line up, and also how many times Spectre is going to die. Looks like she bought, bought the drum recipe before death, so not as much money being lost by the Spectre. But it's obviously not the greatest position in the world. Because she gave a lot of experience over. And he lost a lot of time in farming. And this allows Harney to have a bigger advantage. So come with me as well as uh, Rise. They keep going on this on this gank train. Three point Hellfire Blast. Two point actually up in Vampiric Aura. So no extra point up in the stats here from come with me. Even though the rework was there. Uh, but then again, it's, it's reincarnation. Yeah. It works. Now Ace. She's getting a lot of space to farm up. Nex is just feeling so defensive in this lane. He dies once and instantly he fears to come towards the front lines. And rightly so, because there's two guys just hovering around here looking for a kill on him. And with a creep wave under the town, they can try and find him, but they're looking for the ST. And they're both cutting their way into the tree line. The poison comes out, so come with me. He can flag the fact of where that ST is. And most of the creep wave is gone by this point. That's why they couldn't just dive under the tower and search for the kills. If they did that, they would have lost themselves. Track not looking too healthy on this top lane, assuming Harney with the waveform was able to do something about that. And they're coming in towards middle lane. So, already over from Arise. He'll go for the silence. Hellfire Blast. Brewmaster, he does have the split, but that's why the follow up silence from Rise is there. And no two Rise, but the that second point up into the seal. Begin. That extra second duration. Radiance that's what he's searching for. Attack. That's exactly what they needed up against the Brewmaster then. That little bit of extra time to push the advantage. Haste. Well, Puck, I think, was hoping to pick up another rune at this point. But your haste rune going the way of We Just Sick. Come with me, though. He's trying to find his level 6. Now, I'm not quite sure if, if this is really the greatest time to do this. To level up level 6. Kind of enjoy the uh, the way the Chinese run their, their Wraith Kings instead, where they hold on to that, on to that reincarnation. So they don't have to level it up. Which means when you're ready to fight and you think that you can actually, like, there's a purpose to your reincarnation, and then you can level it up during the engagement. Harney's still free farming top lane. 800 gold in front. The puck is now in front of the Spectre, too. 
more and more problematic for the Spectre. You finish up drums, you've got phase boots. That's not bad, but you kind of almost need to go into a, like, I don't want to say diffuser blade, but a casual Yasha into a diffuser blade in this game. It's the it's the biggest weakness of the Fnatic lineup. It's the mana pools over on the Centaur, as well as the Wraith King. Even Spectre, um, Skyrath Mage to a point. Stay near. Are they coming for initiation? Cheshire Cat, he's got no mana for a raw. Sorry was on cooldown. We just sick TP in. He instantly gets silenced up. They're gonna come in one by one with the TPs here. And Hani will stand his ground. Now the Spectre Horn, they'll bring in more right in the tree line. He will go down. Giving a double kill out now. They will repel Fnatic for the moment, but you just committed your Spectre Haunt, you brought everybody up towards the top lane. Well now, Aids gets f space in the bottom lane to find the remaining farm for his Blink Dagger. I think Fnatic are fine with this. They didn't lose much for it. Sure, Spectre now walks around with an extra kill to his name, but they need a lot more to make this worthwhile. Come with me. Radio still alive, still reincarnation. The Blink Dagger is now actually being finished on the rise, so both Blinks will be arriving at the same time for Fnatic. And the top tower is being pushed out. As the puck, well, has a TP scroll, so can come and join the fight. I'll use the fortification. Uh, it's being pushed back. The wall will be available this time from Cheshire Cat, but come with me. Moving forward, and then the double TPs. They're nicely split, but they found Cheshire Cat over on the side. Now, right, he face shifts out, now Ace. The perfect blink dagger times. They didn't realize he had that next, as he's caught himself caught inside the tree line. The concussion shot him up, the Brewmaster of Spirits doing a lot of damage to Rise. They will bring him down, but currently try and beat the crap out of the Spectre, who really has had no influence in this fight. Harney will pick himself up some extra kills, and they're chasing down Sharshlo. And Power Rangers found themselves in way too deep. We're not ready for these blink daggers. At least the Brewmaster can buy his own at the end of it all. But that was not the fight they were searching for. Three for the price of one. A big swing coming up as far as the XP and the gold. And yes, Fnatic had to expend some decent, decent abilities, but they still never actually triggered the reincarnation over on this Wraith King. Not to mention, now you got Kalmi with 215. He's up to 1,000 gold. Which means that Blink Dagger on the Wraith King isn't that far off. Harney's walking around with 1,900 gold, 13 minutes in, which means that ultimate orb's coming up. And the Lincoln Sphere will not be far after a that. To the impurities. Other items, because Orion's already had his Blink Dagger. Should buy up Treads pretty shortly too. Another 400 gold over on the Centaur after he initiated in. And he's your Skywrath Mage with 700 gold, Boots, Sentries, Smoke, Observers. So buying a lot of these utility uh, items for Fnatic. While Power Rangers, now you got a Beastmaster who's got no great initiation. He's not building a mech for his team because he hasn't got that money yet. He's looking for Ancient Farm to probably get himself back on track. While J4, it's basic boots on both the, both the supports. The SD as well as Lashrak net worth. Well, Lashrak's not as bad. Oh, I've got a sensor ulti. They're coming bottom lane. Try again, bring down the Spectre. There's no mana for a Mystic Flare in here for Rise, which is still very problematic. You'll have it in like 10 seconds time. Radiance, middle tower At the same time, if we just sick as well as J4 tried to initiate, then then they could have actually turned back into uh, some seals and control. And with no Brewmaster ultimate, they can't really do anything yet. That's if he TP's and has a crack. Now, Hani, just being very over aggressive, he's got himself a replica, so he has no problem with this. He can just move himself back to this replica if he wants to. Come with me, why are you so low? It's like, uh, well, it's not even Brewmaster. It's just him being so low. 15 seconds left for Hani's replicate. When that happens, he's just gonna waveform in and jump out, out to the replicate. It's like middle lane, a right here. He's gonna drink call and have an initiation here. And they force a primal split. If a rise lives right now, this makes it worth it. The Red King can be set up in towards the air. Because I think Wraith King also knows he can't die in this situation. Bottom lane to have jumped in. Harney, well, he has to wait for himself away to save the ace. Or stop going to find himself some space from the Spectre and now give him space to Blink Dagger down as well. Now the Skyrat Mage is still hovering around here with Harney beside him. Come on, he's also going to scout out the fact that this ancient area is here. And half injured. And Power Rangers, they're just not finding that opening. And because of it, they just keep falling further and further behind. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Oh, I can't show both at the same time? Oh, what a shame. So, Hani, Rise, and, and Arise. Oh, that's not complicated. Uh, look into the bottom lane. 
That sentry ward is down, so they can see the obs which has been left in the lane. That's just easy money coming in for Hani, not to mention easy D ward. As Arise will now pick up a double damage rune. Right underneath the Radiant Observer ward, so they are very much aware of this. But this rune will allow them to force the mid-tier 1 tower. Kawami is keeping the pressure on. Ace is waiting for the jump and initiation. And with the DD rune from Arise, they have enough physical damage to get through this tier 1 tower. Fortification will be available, but if you force that out as well, then Fnatic just rotate to the tier 1. Uh, then again, with the way they change it, you can't just rotate yourself into a tier 1 tower. Let's just let it go, because they know they're going to get it back anyway. Uh, the tower. Yeah, uh, now it will go down. Radiant's Fortification gets to come back off cooldown, so they can protect their bottom tier 1 tower if the, if the rotation did come. At the same time, I don't think they really care. Now, Fnatic, they come over to take the Ancient Stack. They don't want to let Beastmaster have this. As far attack. as vision goes, he's got the Hawk that's watching them do this. But if he comes in too close... It's going to be very problematic. And, and really... Oh, okay, Spectre. With the Brewmaster. So they haunt in and they split. Honey says Liggett Sphere trigger. Now the reincarnation will trigger. Holding Nexus, we just sick J4 and Cheshire Cat all on a slow hit. Yeah, okay, come with me, Deb. <laughs> He's dead through and through. But this Brewmaster's on the wrong side of the river. He's trying to disable everybody so the rest of Power Rangers can come over. As J4 was considering the stun but backed up. Arise has Dream Call and there's no split. Silence on three. Drink call on two, the orb will connect on Cheshire Cat. Shashla will take the hit, but then eight. That's a perfect deal with the Mystic Flare from the Hawkstop initiation. Cheshire Cat's stick charge will keep him alive for a moment. But Hani will bring him down. So Rise really forcing the issue against Power Rangers. Very successfully so. Pushes Fnatic's advantage now, 13 to 6. Overall, Fnatic still coming ahead as far as the experience and gold change. Even makes a replicate of that Spectre, and the jump in. Damn, that all with Rift Attack, Waveform will connect. They do so much damage so quickly, and Nexus? Well, there's a replicate jump out. Honey's still got his strength, his, uh, okay, he's just here on TP. The Lincoln's feel protected from the stunts. You can purge him, but it won't make any effect. Actually, TP'd out to the tier 1 tower. Doesn't have a bottle available, there's a bounty rune on the bottom and an illusion rune up on top. I don't know if Hani just wanted to get out as quickly as, he, quickly as he possibly could, and the tier 1 tower is the nearest thing he could click with his mouse. Bottom tower is they can't be enjoying this push on bottom lane. Now Sharshlo. Well, there's a Mystic Flare available. That Brewmaster, too much damage for him. The Shrek's done, Nexus did arrive as well. Come with me, no reincarnation. He's got a Hellfire Blast, but Riot has no mana. So I'll let Come with me drop, but they got a kill on a Brewmaster for a Wraith King. And that's more than worth it for them. Especially when you've still got Ace free farming up on top lane, building into a pipe. You got Arise just moving himself around the map, having a great time. You'll actually see the change is better for Power Rangers with a 1-1 one -one trade-off. But that's that's the overall money that's being that's been earned. Cheshire Cat's now gonna give a little bit more of that back over to Arise. He's trying to juke out the Shadow Demon who's in the tree line, and Arise kinda knows that he's not alone. He's waiting for the blink dagger to come blink dagger to come off cooldown, and now she just TP out. And they can't see him, they can't stop him. Even the tier 2 tower takes some damage. Now, but the reason why I still will class Fnatic, even though they go behind in golden experience for that kill, is because, one, technically they got some nice levels off it for the Wraith King. But more importantly, you're keeping the Brewmaster down. There's no Aghanim scepter coming out from him. It's treads and a Blink Dagger on a Brewmaster. Radiant's with no Aghanim, no potential BKB. He can't break free Radiant's of these silences. The only thing that will be able to go through a BKB would be a Scythe device that will be purchased. So keeping the Brewmaster away from his next two major items is so critical. They haven't stopped Nexus from getting his Diffuser Plate, but at the same time, the Illusions only have 1,100 life points. Dyer's Middle Tower is under So that's attack. not really a lot to play around with, and that's quite easily disposed of by a lot of the Fnatic lineup. Now, they're going to come in and take Rosham. Is that coming full Blade Mail too? No, he still needs the, uh, the sword. Well, with Roshan going down, Ace will have the full pipe up and available. Now, everyone goes missing, apart from Arise, who's there in the middle lane. Mr. 2.5k gold. They don't need anybody else. And if the initiation does come in, then Arise, actually, even right now, he probably should be rotating down to this area. Even if he's not inside the pit, he should be there for a counter-initiation. Alright, so here they come. 
smoked up. That's why I'm not quite sure why Ryze isn't there. The Spectre Hawk will come. The Brumas jumps in and splits Dyer. They got the Aegis Immortal into the hands of the Morphling. The Skyrim Beach dies very quickly, but now in comes the Ryze. He gets the Silence over on Cheshire Cat. The Dream Call over on two. Raid King may die, but it's probably going to be for the greater good. Even the Disruption was able to save Cheshire Cat for a moment. That Brewmaster and Spectre did some serious work. There's three for the price of two. The Beastmaster's not looking too healthy at the moment. But it's Arnie who's getting brought down. The egg is gone. Cheshire Cat's away to safety. And Harney, well, he's going to make a copy of Nexus and turn his, turn his advantage against him. Hawk stop, will connect, and Nexus will go down. So Roshan, all of, all of his advantage went to Fnatic. Then Power Rangers came in, took a wonderful fight. But at the end of the day, Power Rangers will be coming out on top of that because Fnatic were the ones who had the advantage before that fight began. So the gold comes up from them overall by 1908. And then you've got the experience up as well by 5.1k. This is not the way Fnatic would really want that to go down because they don't get an advantage from the engagement. Remember, this is this is the new world of Dota 2. It Everything is, is about like either you win the team fight fully and then you push with the life that's not as great with uh, with push power, or you're able to force the issue and just push down buildings after you take one or two heroes. That's the way to do this. You win by map control. You win by actually doing what Dota always was, which was force the fortress. That's the thing. You need to bring down the main buildings in order to win the game. It's just become a hell of a lot more important now. Now, Hardy is waiting on the top lane. He's got 2.6k gold over on him. Interested to see, too, what this Morphling wants to build into. If Hardy even values now the E-Blade, or if he considers going for a different style of item. Nah, it's still gonna be E-Blade. He got the Ghost Scepter. It's actually very close to fish to the E-Blade. Silence, Dream Call. He's got a Horn of Cooldown in the moment, but they'll have it. No, damn it, there goes the Horn, but he's already down. That's a big waste. That's actually a really big waste, especially in middle lane when they find Cheshire Cat. Ace was able to jump himself in. With that center, Oli Shashlo will jump himself straight back out again. But you take two towers. Well, you take two kills and then you take the towers. This means Hani's E-Blade is now up and running. And that's a full advantage coming, coming the way of Fnatic. So Santa will take the last hit. Honey has to go back to pick it up. But they just rotate towards mid lane. He's already got a replicate, which is at 33 life points. So hey, why not? E blade, jump back over to it. Here I am. And again, they do need the creep wave with them. That's the puck now. Actually, going through Dagon build. Because that's one way where you can couple up with the Morphling. They were a good gank team over on that top lane. But if you get that E blade hit off. Harney. Okay, let's see how long J4 survives. So as she now uses the waveform to initiate, that's how he can get himself in range for it. But then E-Blade into Adaptive Strike. Still seems to be effective me. It's a good combo. Pushing his experience up, he's 903 over on this Morphling. Fnatic looking very good up against Power Rangers. And they're gonna beat down this tier 2 tower, and they got it. Set will take the last hit up to 2.4k gold now. And Fnatic will be very efficient about this. I think even with this, uh, with this semi new roster, I wanna make sure no chances are taken. So a tier 2 tower in the bottom lane should be the next objective. There's already a DD rune in the bottom river, which they can see. Which can also be picked up, but Harley's gonna force out the top lane, leaves a replicate behind. They wanna make sure every single lane is controlled by Fnatic. And so far, they're doing a bloody good job of it. And what do you really hit back from here? Like, Power Rangers. Uh, they are able to plateau the advantage for a little bit, but... They're not getting any of the major control back. Now, Harney, Lucas Field be triggered. They roar him as well. He's still got a replicate available. And now, Harney, the stuns. Is it going to be long enough? Strength morph. Oh, he's had the replicate. They committed a lot to that. Spectre Haunt, the, B the Beastmaster Ultimate. Four heroes up to that top lane. We just six the only man defending it. Which means they, they've only got one choice. They have to take the tier one tower. But it's again another DD ruined up arise. So this bottom tier two tower will not last long. The Fnatic will go high ground. A tier two for a tier one trade up any day. They use their fortification early because they know when the tower goes down, there is no, there's another fortifica fortification available. So they will 100% win on the trade. And they'll come high ground. They want to end this now. They already had their advantage. There's no reason to back down. They need to bring down the ranks, however. That's going to be their primary objective. With the E-Blade hitting Harley not looking too healthy at the moment. 
Needs actually life leech out a little bit more here, but come with me. Without the creep wave there, he's already doesn't really help out Harney. And Harney's actually, yeah, he's gonna replicate out. I mean, uh, jump out to heal up and then replicate in. That looks right, no looks too healthy. The Aziz drop is going to be there. The Hellfire Blast J4 will nice. burn from that. Which means they've already got the kill, and now Hani comes back into the replicate. Again, though, he's on a full life. And now, though, he's a Shashlo. They're really getting that combination right. Looking for the perfect timing when Hani's going to E Blade, and then they couple their abilities together. And this will allow Fnatic to take the healing ranks in the mid, and maybe even a little bit more. The advantage is fully there at the moment. And Hoof Stomp jumping. Cheshire Cat, defensive destruction, but they call it GG. Cheshire Cat does it while he's out of this world. And rightly so. Fnatic have this game quite firmly in the bag. So we'll be having ourselves a short break. We'll come back here for game number two of our D2CL coverage for tonight. When Fnatic will be playing up against Power Rangers for the next game. And remember, Fnatic, they're keeping their hopes alive with this one. And they also just opened up the entire group stage with that with that loss now. Because Power Rangers, well, they've opened up a choice for Alliance, Na'Vi, Virtus Pro, everyone in the bottom part of this bracket to still make it into the European playoffs.